Well, when I was in front of Labour Party members last year fighting to be the deputy leader of the party, I said that I would work with whoever the party leaders, the party elected as leader, and I've done that for the last nine months, the best of my ability. But I think now I've resigned because it just isn't working. I think that one of the first things that a Labour leader has to do is be able to communicate to the country and our voters. And yet, a few days before the EU referendum, over 50% of them didn't know what our position was. And we were the only party that was united in campaigning for Remain. And with a general election likely to be looming, as you've heard from what the Conservatives are doing, accelerating their leadership campaign with a new Prime Minister who I think will seek a new mandate quickly, we need to have someone at the helm of the Labour Party that can speak out for the communities who are going to suffer most from any recession that happens as a result of Brexit. How do you think he's feeling right now? Well, look, I, 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 Jeremy is an honest and decent man. Uh, and I know that he has done his best. And I think he's charted a new way forward for the Labour Party. But I just don't think that he can communicate or lead the party in these tumultuous times. I think he must be feeling wretched. I think a lot of us are feeling wretched. I'm certainly feeling wretched. Uh, but I think the party is uh, bigger than any one person. We exist to represent communities that have had opportunities taken off them that are poorer and harder hit, as well as lead our country into a social democratic space where there are more opportunities. And if you can't do that as a leader, then I think you have to acknowledge that and step aside and let somebody else do that job. But the Labour Party is a party about uniting people, isn't it? And you know, you've not just stabbed him in the back. As a group, you've stabbed him in the front. You've stabbed him anywhere you can. I haven't stabbed him at all. I tried to see him uh, yesterday. I texted him and asked to have a face-to-face -face meeting with him yesterday. I got absolutely no response for 24 hours. I finally had to chase around and get him to phone me. Uh, this isn't the first time that there's a dysfunction around um, the way that things are done or communication is bad. And it, in the times we're entering into, in these dangerous times from our country, I just don't think that that is adequate. It just won't do and it has to change. What about the grassroots backlash? Because he still has a lot of support. Look, I understand that. But I gave a pledge to our party members that I would serve. I have done so to the best of my ability for the last few months. And I've concluded after a great deal of agonizing and examination that it's not in the best interest that this continues, especially with the political challenges that lie ahead for our country uh, and the communities that we went into Parliament to represent. And so I've done uh, what I've done today with a very heavy heart. Mm, I suppose some might say that now is the time that the Labour Party should have been united. I mean, look at what's happening with the government. They're literally flailing around, not knowing which direction to turn. Um, and yet you're not offering them a credible opposition. Well, I think today, uh, if Jeremy does what I hope he will do and realises that he should go with dignity after setting us off on a new course and helping us think very carefully, differently about the future, that should be his legacy. And I think he needs to realise that it's not about him. Uh, this isn't about him. It's about the country and about steering uh, the Labour family through these times so that we can serve our constituents and our country properly by having an effective uh, opposition, a credible opposition. I think today, unfortunately, is the first step towards bringing that about. If he stands again, he's more than likely going to be your, your leader again, isn't he? Well, look, I would say to Jeremy, please um, understand that you can't continue uh, as leader if you have no support within uh, Parliament amongst your colleagues. But the fact is he can. Well, I think that the Labour Party is bigger than the personal interests of any one But aren't you out of step rather leader. than him? I mean, he's in step with the grassroots. It, it's, it, it's his shadow cabinet that is not. But we have to communicate with the wider electorate, with Labour voters, uh, and with the country as a whole, if we're but going to form a government. But he would say that he is, and you're not. But he clearly isn't. I've been on a lot of doorsteps up and down the country in the last period. We had a very 
simple position in the EU referendum that we were for Remain. He did not manage to communicate that position to the country as a whole in that referendum campaign. It was lacklustre and it wasn't clear. But he was the, representing would, Labour voters, wasn't he? No. I mean, a lot of Labour voters decided to vote out. A lot of Labour voters were looking to the Labour Party for a proper indication of what we should do. And Jeremy didn't succeed in communicating So is it that. his fault that we've now left the European Union? No, of course not. Um, I think that we have to cope with the aftermath, though, and that is causing huge difficulties. And we know that our uh, communities in the north, places where often Labour MPs represent, are have already been the hardest hit uh, by the cuts that the Conservative government have inflicted on them since 2010. Uh, they're now facing an even bigger hit. And we came into politics to defend them. And after agonising, I've come to the conclusion that Jeremy isn't the person that can do that. I've said that to him, and I've asked him to consider resigning. And I hope that he will do so. OK. Will you stand? I think that today is about trying to restore credibility to the Labour Party. I don't think today is about speculating but the, as about the who the, any future apart, leader They're looking for be. guidance, aren't they? People are looking for guidance. So they're looking for people who, if it's not going to be Jeremy Corbyn, who is it going well, to look, be? I think that are I you th interested? I think that what today is about is persuading Jeremy to go with dignity, uh, with a good legacy of changing the way that the party works and how it's organised. Uh, and if that happens, then Tom Watson will be the interim leader and then there can be a discussion about any kind of future leadership contest. But you've got to get that process in order. Today is about saying to Jeremy, with all respect, please, please put the interests of the Labour Party first and resign. He sounded like a Labour version of Boris Johnson. He would never say whether he was going to stand or not. Are you going to stand? I think or? that's the biggest insult oh, I've I ever... <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, I don't think I'm a, la a Labour version of Boris Johnson. Um, I've agonised over the weekend. I've done what I've done, and it's now up to Jeremy. OK. Do you, I'm going to ask you a, a final time. If you were asked to stand, would you? And I'm saying that I, today is not the day for having that discussion. I think today is a day for deep reflection uh, for Jeremy, our leader, and I hope uh, that he considers what everybody has said and realises that it's in the best interests of uh, our party, the communities we represent and the country that he presides. We know you're watching Sky News. If he's watching right now, what would you say to him? Well, Jeremy, I talked to you earlier today. I expressed my admiration for the work you've done. And I hope that you realise that uh, you will be remembered with great fondness as a good leader of the party who charted a different direction. But you must remember that the party is bigger than you, and I hope that you'll realise you can't continue without the support of Congress. And no offence intended. Thank you very much indeed. Non-take. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks.